So welcome back guys to SJ Sim Flights here in the Cessna 172 Flight Simulator. Now I've got a couple uh, requests the other night uh, asking me about what I run uh, for the instrument panel. Um, it's a very nice sophisticated instrument panel, you can do a lot of editing to it. Um, I'll show you this uh, throughout this video. Uh, but this is Air Manager. Now some of you obviously may be familiar with this, some might use other programs and some of you might not know uh, what this is at all. So this currently runs on a 24 inch uh, PC monitor. Uh, we just cut out uh, within this MDF board um, and slotted it in. Uh, the dials um, are pretty much the same size as what they would be in the real world uh, in terms of the circumference and diameter of them. Um, they're all readable, very clear to see. Uh, if I just zoom in you might be able to see some of the numbers and dials on there. So very clear, uh, you haven't got to squint at any of the uh, numbers or dials on there. So yeah, so what I'm going to do in this one uh, is show you what Air Manager is, how you can set it up and uh, get flying with it. So hope you can join me in this video. So we're obviously just in the cockpit now. Now the first step to uh, installing Air Manager, um, this particular um, software, uh, you can get it on uh, your iPhone. Uh, you can get it on an iPad, uh, iPad mini, the normal iPad size, uh, or obviously on a laptop or desktop PC. Uh, I've currently got this downloaded onto my laptop. The desktop version is a little bit more expensive uh, than the um, iPad or App Store version. Um, only a few more pounds, um, not too much, but it is worth it because obviously you get it in a nice big full size view and it does allow you to a couple more features as well. But what we're going to do first now, the uh, site to download Air Manager from is called Sim Innovations. So if we type in Sim Innovations onto there, and I'll just show you what the website looks like first. So you go on Sim Innovations. Hopefully this won't take too long to load. There we go. So you can see the first one, it pops up. This is their main um, piece of kit that they uh, offer, uh, which is Air Manager. Now what you can do, you can either try the demo, I think it'll probably give you about 30 minutes to actually try it. Um, I mean, if I'm honest, the best thing to do is to just buy this first. Now obviously, uh, if you are you have a, um, a Google tablet, you can download it on Google Play. Uh, if you obviously have an iPad, iPhone, um, you obviously can download it on the App Store. Uh, or if you have a desktop version or a Mac, or anything like that, which is a PC, you can download it for Windows 10 uh, or Apple Mac. So let's say we're going for buy four on here. And we go down and there's a choice of these uh, that you can pick from. Um, so the Air Manager for desktop, um, they do this all in euros. Uh, it's a little bit more on the hefty side now. I certainly bought it slightly cheaper and I got it. Um, a couple of years back now, uh, it's up to 65 euros now. Um, but honestly, it will be the cheapest investment you make rather than having to build your own real life instruments. This will save you a lot of money uh, and a lot of time um, in terms of the hardware and software point of view. So let's say we've bought that now. What we then have to do is go on to uh, let's go back a minute. Let's type in Sim Innovation Plugin. So you're now going to need to download the plugin. So this plugin will basically enable you or for your PCs, for example, my laptop to talk to my, um, obviously my main PC, uh, which is running the simulator software itself. So you click on that. So now this will give you a list of um, plugins. It's done on Wikipedia for some weird reason. Um, but if you go down now, you obviously have the options for Windows or Mac or uh, Linux. Um, and depending on which one you have, I'm guessing the majority of you will have it on a Windows. Uh, preferably, uh, they, it likes to be run on Windows 10. So let's say uh, we want to download that. We click on that. Hopefully it won't take too long to download. Um, but let's say, let's let's skip that actually. So let's say we've downloaded and the plugins installed. So once you've clicked on here and you've downloaded it, that's it, it's all done. 
So we've got that uh, installed into our files now. That's all cool. Um, what you then need to do is um, you will then need to go onto your um, laptop or iPad or anything like that onto the actual app and start with your settings. So we're now behind the scenes uh, of or the front of the simulator. Um, so as before, this is where um, my uh, instruments are connected or are displayed on. Um, so this is just again that 24 inch PC monitor which just runs via HDMI cable uh, down uh, to the uh, laptop. What we're going to do first, I'm just going to cover up this IP address number here because uh, showing that on camera is a little bit dodgy uh, when you put it in public. Uh, but where my index finger is here, um, behind it um, is a IP address box. Now you go on to this one up here, where my pinky is, where it says settings, and then you scroll down and you'll see where it says flight simulator connection mode. You will then see a drop down box with all the different types of simulators. So for this case, I'm obviously going to be using Xplane. And then next to it, to the right hand side, is the IP address box. Now the IP address basically um, has the uh, power to connect both the PC and for this instance my laptop together. So what you're going to do is that you basically need to go onto your, let's say this is our main monitor at the moment, on the projector screen. You go onto your search bar, you then type in CMD, now this stands for uh, Command Prompt. It will then come up with command prompt on there. Click on that. It may bring up the bar on this screen in here because of how I have them configured. So there it is there. So uh, you'll see this screen here. Now what uh, you want to do is type in ipconfig and then you press one here and the one you want to be looking for is called IPv4 address, okay? Uh, and this will give you the number that you need to enter into the box that I just showed you uh, on the laptop, okay? Um, once you enter this in, the two are now uh, essentially connected. What we then need to do, we then click off command prompt. We then go on to X plane 11. So we're now going to go around to the other side and we're going to go back to panels. I'm now going to show you uh, what you can do um, with these instrument panels. So I can move these instruments around to wherever I like. Uh, I can have them up there, down here, but obviously I'm going to have them all nicely aligned and in the right order that they are. Uh, in the real Cessna 172 simulator, or Cessna 172, sorry, uh, aircraft. You can then pick uh, on different panels, so I can, plus a panel, these are pre-made ones, so we can scroll down, you've got all sorts of different uh, kinds of uh, instrument panels on here, uh, for jetliners, helicopters, fighter jets, small aircraft, etc. But I don't want to do that uh, in this case, so I just want to go off uh, that so let's click off of that and press add so this is just um, an example of what it's like when you download a new panel so it will say image not found now uh, obviously these will start to load up um, but when you actually uh, click onto uh, your uh, x-plane software and you open it all up these will all appear so I don't want this panel, obviously I want to go into the Cessna 172 panel, you can also have jetliners, so I made this one here for a 737, um, but I'm going to go back to my Cessna 172, so once you click on that, you then click on show, and it'll bring up, up in a full screen, there we go, and for the next bit, you'll see uh, what happens when these are in operation. Okay, so uh, we're now uh, in the cockpit. Everything's set up, our views are set up nicely. We've got the left and right wing. So, uh, let's say you've now uh, connected Air Manager. You've, we all see we've bought it, we've downloaded it, we've installed the plugin, we've entered the two IP or the IP address uh, into the app. 
all the desktop software. Now we're going to make sure that it's all working with the actual software itself. So what we're going to do, I've got my switch panel down here. Now, obviously, when you turn the batteries on uh, in a general aviation aircraft, they should pop up. There we go with our warning lights. So we've got our warning lights flashing. Uh, just to skip a few things, let's say we just want to turn on the engine to make sure that all the other instruments are working. So we're going to click or turn to start and you can see when the propeller starts we get our rise in engine RPM. So we're going to pull that back down and just let that sit at around 1200 degrees, uh, 1200 degrees, 1200 RPM. Uh, we can see that if I put the flaps down we've got a little flap uh, reading there. So we've got 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees and we can see that those have worked on either side of the wing so we put those back up and you can see that that goes back to neutral and they've retracted. Uh, I've got a trim tab here uh, on an electric trim. Obviously Cessnas normally have a trim wheel. Some are built with uh, these trim tabs now but we got our trim tab going up and down there. If we move the throttle up and down, we can see our RPMs working. So let's say we move off. So we're now going to obviously just uh, do a little bit of uh, a left and right turn. So you see if we go to the left, our compass is going to move to the left. If we go to the right. We can see our compass goes to the right as well. Uh, if we go on to a runway now, uh, you can see all the little uh, airport just there here at Shoreham. So let's say we want to taxi out. Uh, we'll just pick a random runway just to show you uh, how to or what the uh, instruments are doing when actually in flight. So these work and operate exactly in the same way as they should do uh, in the real world. Um, the uh, fuel gauge, uh, the oil temperature and pressures, they all work as well. So the more fuel you fill it up with on the actual x 11 software, you can see these moving up and down as well. So let's go full power. So we've obviously got it in the green there. Engine temperatures and pressures are in the green. We've got our airspeed rising now. And once we lift off, you can see our artificial horizon is working as well now. So here we are up in the air, just climbing out of Shoreham now, and you can see our altimeter is climbing as well. Obviously once we get to about two, 300 feet we're going to put the flaps up, and they've gone up, and the nose is obviously going to start to dip. So yeah, there you go. Uh, that's uh, how these instruments work. You can see if you go left and right, or roll left and right, sorry, it's going to roll with it. Our turn coordinator works. So yeah, so once you've got everything installed and set up, just do a little test flight just to make sure it works. Uh, if you see an instrument that isn't working, it could be just a software development thing. It might not be that uh, your sim uh, isn't compatible with it. It should be. Uh, but yeah, any questions or queries, uh, don't forget to obviously like and subscribe. But uh, comment below if you have any other questions about this video uh, or message me directly at SJ Sim Flights. So have a good one guys and stay safe.